everyone. It is Nathan here. Just wanted to thank everyone for tuning in. It's been a while since we have had a Tuesday night chat. Um, so yeah, actually, I might just, uh, there's something I forgot to do here. It's been a, a little while here. So <laughs> while everyone's tuning in, I just need to um, fix up something here. So we're on all platforms. I forgot to throw it over here. So um, hey everyone, I've seen that uh, quite a few of you are here in uh, in Instagram. Thanks a lot for, for tuning in and uh, yeah, checking out, seeing what's going on. So uh, just had a little bit of a hiccup over on Facebook and waiting for everybody to tune on uh, in Facebook land. So uh, hey Steve, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah. So now that everybody is online, lots and lots of things uh, have been happening uh, since we last caught up. Um, most importantly, settled on that motel in Cooktown that I uh, that I was at the other last month. Actually, it's been about a month since I was there, um, and that Facebook Live was a little bit sort of um, sketchy because I'd literally just driven <laughs> about. 4,000 kilometers and uh, rocked into this place about 10 minutes before our live. So yeah, uh, today I am back in Sydney and uh, got lots of cool things for us to talk about. Um, lots of questions coming in from the community. So if you guys have any questions, uh, put them into the comments below and I will get to them by the end of the video. But um, what about the world we live in today? What an awesome world, you know, awesome things going on. Um, and lots of sort of, uh, you know, fun things and lots of opportunities out there. So um, I'd love to hear what opportunities um, you guys have been working on and also, um, you know, getting back to our inflation topic, where, uh, what is happening in the inflation market, like what's happening in the markets there due to inflation, like what have you seen uh, rising in value um, since we last caught up? So, uh, you know, from what I see out there, uh, it's not just food, it's not just like uh, everything is rising more and more as we you know, go through 2021. So um, with it, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to get straight into it. So I've got a couple of questions here already. I'll, I'll answer a few questions and we'll get into some news articles. Um, how's it all going? Hope you're well. I'm doing awesome. Never been better in my life. Uh, Rob Birchie, you bloody superstar. Thanks, mate. Uh, Brad, are you still getting good deals for your clients, mate, or is everything flying off the shelves? The market is very, very hot. It is a difficult market uh, to be buying. I would prefer to have a market crash, uh, which I'm very upset we haven't seen yet. Um, you know, who's to say that we won't see that in the future, but I, I will get into where I think the market is heading uh, very shortly. Um, but the market is very, very hot out there. Finding markets that haven't been um, you know, pushed up is very difficult at the moment. Um, even the deepest, darkest corners of the country where I buy uh, weird and wacky properties are getting and experiencing a very uh, big boom. So I will get onto that shortly. So um, a few news articles uh, to start the day off. Uh, one here is an article here from Seeking Alpha. I just posted this in the Birch feed um, as we went live, so if you want to read with it, read with me with this article. Be my guest. Gold um, is a gold story. Fed is shutting down. Its money supply data is alarming. So uh, this article was posted on April the twelfth, twenty twenty one, uh, which is only a couple of weeks ago. The Federal Reserve has shut down its money supply data as money supply has increased five hundred percent. Going back in March last year, so exactly a year ago. Uh, roughly now, uh, I did a video uh, titled Hyperinflation, What to Expect and drew a big chart and I'm not going to go through it again. If you want to watch it, just type in Hyperinflation, Be Invested, Nathan Birch in the YouTube, you'll find the video. But um, I said we would see a hyperinflation occur, uh, which we're still on track for. Uh, I said it wouldn't occur on the day, we would need some time for this to actually uh, roll out and, and come into effect. Um, we're starting to see some of the effects of it. but. The, the best uh, uh, to come. Um, but in the last uh, 12 months, uh, we have seen uh, the money supply increase by 500%. So the amount of money out there um, has gone up via 500%. Inflation is a major threat. 
the M2 money supply is up 30% in the past year. A financial crisis is coming and fears that they stopped reporting the money supply because they believe uh, they will need to produce even more money to pump into the economy. Um, we have got the largest property boom of all time. Uh, we have got the largest stock market boom of all time. Uh, we've got all these markets taking off. Uh, why are we in the biggest depression of all time? We've got the, the, the largest depression uh, of all our lives. We've got the biggest financial crisis of all our lives. Uh, but for some reason, um, we've got the largest growth. And <laughs> I think we're starting to see the scam. Um, they're starting to wind back some of the, the stimulus packages that have been put out there. So as we can see in Australia, we have no longer got the job keeper. Um, we've got you know a wind back on a lot of these sort of uh, stimulus packages, uh, which you know um, I loved them. Uh, I think they're amazing. Uh, I think everybody uh, should have uh, felt the same sort of sentiment because it was a great time. Um, is this going to be the last that we're going to see job keeper and job maker and all that sort of stuff? Not at all. We're going to see a lot more of these packages come in. We've only seen phase one of our crisis here. Um, we, uh, everyone's feeling like they're wealthy. Everyone is feeling like they are rich. Everybody is feeling like you know they're, they're heroes and uh, they're making so much money and all this sort of stuff. But they're not understanding the fundamentals of the ta of of what's happening out there in the economy. So you start taking it here in Australia. If we start taking away the stimulus packages, we're going to see a retracement. Uh, we're going to see tightening of liquidity in the markets, and we're going to start seeing um, some of that pain that was meant to be handed to us beforehand, but hasn't been. So. Um, that's one of the things that we're going to start to see. We're seeing in the US, they didn't even get, they, I think they got like a $2,000 or $1,200 check uh, for having to be locked in their house for a year. They didn't even get that per week or per fortnight like here in Australia. Um, and now they have upped the ante with um, that guy that's, you know, doesn't even have a brain. Uh, what's his name? The president, the, the guy that wheeled out on a wheelchair. What's his name? Biden. Um, he has increased capital gains taxes for people. Um, people have asked me, Nathan, what would happen if we saw capital gains uh, tax increases here in Australia? Uh, we could quite well see uh, tax changes here in Australia. Um, however, I don't think uh, we will because if they change capital gains tax here, um, our economy is built up on a Ponzi scheme of money being printed and being pumped into uh, properties and financial instruments. So um, it, that it would be very, very detrimental to the whole economy if they were to do that. So um, I don't see them doing that. I just think from the sheer fact of removing some of those stimmy checks that they'd printed off everyone, uh, we're going to see massive pain out there anyway. So we will be starting to feel a bit of a tightening, a bit of a crisis. Hopefully it'll shake a few weak hands out there. Are we going to go into any you know, price crash, correction and price crash? I don't believe so because there's enough sort of money sloshing around in the system, but we could see some little glitches there in the, the market. There is still markets within Australia, within Sydney, within capital cities, which haven't taken off all that much. They are pr proving us some very good opportunities. Um, I think we'll see um, you know, a, a lot more growth in those areas when we start seeing immigration happen and we open up our borders for people to migrate. Just as everyone's you know, run and fled to Queensland or the Gold Coast or whatever, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of people um, you know, fleeing from third world countries like US and England and uh, you know, all those sort of uh, people that have been under some totalitarian sort of uh, style regimes. So it's going to be exciting. So we could still see um, very much so uh, a, a crisis. Uh, and I think that it's, you know, whether it's 12 months, 24 months away, um, we will start seeing some cracks appear in the economy. Everybody's feeling like we're in this big boom right now. No one's smart. No one did something so great. Uh, no one's really produced much. Uh, all we've done is racked up a lot of debt. And uh, that debt uh, is making everyone richer. Um, but are they really richer, right? Because going back two years ago, for your money, you could have got a lot more. Uh, for your time, you could have got a lot more. Um, there was a lot more value back then. So people will feel richer, but they're not actually richer than what they were three years ago. 
But um, getting back to the Seek and Alpha article, a financial crisis is coming and fears they stopped reporting the money supply because they believe they will need to produce even more money to pump into the economy. Hyperinflation is inevitable, question mark. The Federal Reserve has stopped reporting its money supply data as often as money supply has significantly increased here, making uh, inflation a major threat. In a recent v video, Michael Cohen uh, said the Federal Reserve had stopped recording the increase in the M1 and the M2 money supply, which he said is a major crime against the American people. M1 money supply includes that are very liquid, such as cash, checkable demand deposits, and traveler checks. M2 money supply is less liquid in nature and includes the M1 plus savings and time deposits, certificates and deposits. Um, certificates of deposits and the money market funds. As the government pumps more money in the economy, it takes your money makes your money worth less and less. The M1 money supply has increased by 450% in one year. 450% in one year, the M1 money supply increased. No wonder why they're trying to hide that, right? So you need to look at this data that is coming out, like whether it's from the US, whether it's from Australia, whether it's from a different market, it doesn't need to be a property market. Everyone looks at property and go, oh, I've seen a chart and it looks so great. It's all bullshit. Um, it all comes down to the amount of money that's being created or currency that's being created and sloshed around out there. Um, the uh, M1 supply has increased by 450 in one year, and yet they say no inflation is coming. How can you see like the cost of everything rising, but they're still saying we haven't got inflation yet. We haven't seen the price of goods rise yet. You know, what is happening? Uh, the M2 money supply is up 30% in the last year. Uh, Cohen said that a financial crisis is coming up fears that they stop reporting the money supply because they believe they will need to produce even more money to pump in the economy. If they do that, uh, inflation is bound to hit hard, which it will. Right? That's why you need to have physical assets. Don't worry about debt. Um, debt is, you know, a lot of people feel that, you know, debt is the, the baddest thing out there and all that sort of stuff. Um, I love my debt. I wish I had more. Uh, unfortunately, my loans are principal and interest, so they're paying themselves down. I think I'm sitting at maybe like 17 and a half, 17 mil, something like that. Um, it's going down quite quick, which I wish it wasn't. I wish I could uh, expand that more, but that's a story for another day. Um, central banks are now saying that they can increase the money supply by 500% and it won't affect inflation and it won't be base currency. <laughs> won't do base currency. We're gonna talk about silver later, guys and girls. We're gonna talk about uh, the, the short squeeze out there. We're going to talk about the COMEX. There's lots of things that I want to cover off in the day. But um, this guy goes on to say those those are lies. You can't print money and not have a debasement of currency and inflation. Basic economics states that fact. The government stopping public access to money supply information is extremely worrying. That is just hiding the fraud. That's just hiding the lies. That's you know, if, if you or I tried to uh, counterfeit money, if you or I tried to print money, um, it wouldn't go down to, well, we'd end up in jail, uh, they'd kidnap us, they'd throw us away in a cage and we'd be bashed and beaten and Christ knows what would happen to us all if we were done to that. So, you know, I did a video the other day, it will come out shortly, um, and it was a thank you message to all of these commie scammy people, because if it wasn't for those guys, you know, playing this big scam on the world, uh, devaluing the money, devaluing the currency, um, and abusing the system, we wouldn't have the opportunity to make cool stuff happen. So I really do like the game. I like to understand the game and I like to capitalize on it. And you know, that's why I share with you guys these, you know, these funny videos because I'm looking at it, pulling apart that data and trying to show you where to, you know, where to go to and where to take advantage of the opportunities. Mm -hmm. Central banks can be a threat, as is happening now, by printing money. They're looting the economy. They are buying bonds. They're buying corporate debt, stocks, and other assets, which makes the billionaires wealthier and destroys the middle class. If you hold your dollars, get out of them right now before you, they lose even more value. The only time that I would find dollars fun is if we're going to through a deflationary cycle. We are not going through a deflationary cycle. We may see a glitch. So I'm just throwing it out there now. 12 months before, 18 months beforehand, um, I think that we're going to see one hell of a ride continuing up. But there could be glitches. And I say the word loosely, could. Um, could be glitches over the course of the next sort of, you know, 
12 months, 18 months, 24 months, where there could be some little opportunities, but they're going to have to keep printing through this. This era, this decade being the 20s, we're going to see what I would call the great print. They're just going to keep printing and printing and printing, and those with money in the bank account are losing their purchasing power every day. Uh, this article goes on to read, the 10-year note is starting to show inflationary tendency. The rate is 1.66 and has reached 1.77 recently. The market is telling us that the 10-year note, which has risen from 0.51 in August 2020 to 1.66 today, that inflation is coming. Rates have tripled in the last in the in the just a few months. So that is alarming for a lot of people. Um, so what does that mean, that data to me when I read that? Um, the 10-year US Treasury note has risen from a half a percent. Uh, to 1.66 percent uh, in the us and a lot of nations that borrow from the us that is where uh, their base currency is is said um, and basically you know where the interest rates would be dictated from the central bank so if we were here in australia it was a one year or the three year bond uh, we would most likely be tied to that's where our interest rate would go there is pressure being put up for interest rates to rise um, but once again if they rise those interest rates by one or two quarter of a percent basis point moves, everybody goes kaboom, especially after all the debt that's been taken on recently, especially taken on um, you know, by what's been expanded over the course of the last 12 months. When you go to buy a property, let's assume that someone goes to buy a property, they bought a property two years ago, it's worth 200 grand, it's gone up to 400 grand, the new person comes in, buys it for 400,000. They go to the bank, get a loan for 80%, of that money, so 80% of 400 grand would be 320. They'd put down an 80% deposit, $80,000 deposit, wherever that comes from. And in short, um, the bank would come up and give them the 320. So if on the person selling the prop buying the property, they get a loan from the bank, the bank takes that 320 grand, gives it to the other person that's selling it, they take charge of the mortgage and over that security. The person that bought it for 200 now gets 320 in their hand. Let's assume they had a 200 grand loan or a 100 grand loan or no loan. What has happened is that person has now got 320 grand for whatever they wish to do. They want to go buy more property, want to go pay down debt, um, you know, want to go buy more assets. People are not going out and, buy, and paying down their debt. They're going out there and buying more stuff. And that is causing inflation because now we've got an extra 320,000 in the system. Where did the bank get the money from to give on behalf of the new purchaser. They just made it up. They put a letter in the safe saying, you owe me uh, 320,000 at some point, and I'll just keep sending you, charging you for that uh, money. So yeah, that's the system that we're in. Um, we look at shadow stats uh, for how inflation would be running if it was calculated the same way it was in 1980. The CPI, if it was calculated using the same method today in 1980, would be significantly higher than what it was uh, the government says it is now. Inflation under the 1980s rate is at 6%, which is far higher than what the government says it is using in the new formula. So basically, inflation uh, is is uh, rampant. As Kane said here, uh, CPI index seems to be manipulated. Uh, the markets are all rigged. They are all manipulated. Understand how it works, and it is a great game. We go to Australia, and this is just a chart on um, on um, trading economics. This is the M1 money supply chart. It goes on to read. So if you just go to Google, type in M1 money supply chart, and it'll come up with trading economics. Uh, it goes on to say money supply in M1 in Australia has increased to 1428 AUD billion. So it's uh, $1.48 trillion in February from $1.408 trillion. So it's gone up about $20 billion in a month. That is, um, that is uh, the, the, fun, the fun thing there. So this chart with those rates going up, that would be good if it was your Bitcoin. That would be good if it was your house prices. That would be good whatever it would be. The thing is, is that's just the amount of money that they are printing into this scam at the moment. 
and that's why everything is rising. If we start seeing that head backwards, we're going to see deflation and we're going to see the cost of things go down. So just be aware of that. I'll, I'll flick that into Birch Feed now as well. Uh, if you're not in Birch Feed, go check it out. I do post some random stuff in there. Sorry if I offended anyone the other week when um, I posted about the, the, the Queen's husband that died. You know, one less bad person in the world um, that's out there. So... Um, here is the new article that I was talking about beforehand, Biden's um, uh, new uh, tax that he's got. Um, Biden's eyeing tax rate as high as 43.4% in the e next economic package. So he's delivering, delivering a stimulus package, which has got um, deflationary measures in there. So that's not going to end up too well. Uh, people earning over $1 million would pay 396 uh, percent plus Obamacare levy, i.e. Medicare. Um, total tax rates for New Yorkers, Californians could top at 50%. Really, really crazy. But of course, uh, the wealthy don't go and use uh, their income and, and savings like that. They're going to use different structures. So it wouldn't, um, you know, am I ever going to go and, you know, earn an income of a million dollars a year? No, like, you know, my business is might, but myself, I'm just a poor, humble guy from Western Sydney, remember? So looking at that, um, that is that. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about is um, the silver shortage, which is upcoming. So um, for those of you, if you know about the silver market, if you know about the rigging of um, silver pr paper prices and, and prices, um, smash up the likes, hit a like, um, send a, uh, a message in the, the comment section and we will uh, have a look at that and I'd like to see your feedback on it. But um, I've got a few videos um, coming out shortly just talking about um, silver and, and the pricing and uh, my thoughts on the manipulation there. Mm. But when they say that silver is worth, you know, 26 bucks US, uh, is it really worth $26, right? If we go and have a look at the price of everything in the world, we will see that, you know, a bottle of water, a meat pie, a packet of chips, a car, um, a chair, a table, everything was much more cheaper back in 1980 or 1970. How come when we look at things like silver, they are still still it is still cheaper than what it was going back you know 10 years ago 20 years ago why um, has that market been suppressed and the price really comes from this thing uh, called the comex and there's um there basically there's paper contracts so um i don't know the exact numbers of how much silver they say is out there but let's say that there's allegedly two billion ounces of silver in the world and silver is used in these devices that you're watching me from um, it's in TVs it's in your car it's in your solar panels on your roof it's being consumed so unlike gold it is being consumed and there's less and less of it but let's assume that there's two million ounces of it how can the comex have you know orders out there for um, saying that they have um, enough silver to provide for you know two billion ounces right why is there more silver than what there really is right and how do they manipulate it so they use a lot of paper um, paper contracts to you know push the price down and artificially keep it down and um, going back in um, January this year um, there was a Wall Street bets group uh, which went and did the GameStop if you recall uh, GameStop shares they pushed the price up by buying all of the uh, the GameStop shares and all the people that were doing the short selling had to buy off them, which pushed the price up all the way up to like 350 bucks. It was like a dead company. It was a zombie company on like $5 or $3 or some shit like that. And its price went up in the hundreds, like 300 bucks or, or something to that effect. So these guys here went out and they did that. And then they went to the Comex and they tried to take delivery of um, you know, lots of silver. So if they can take uh, all these orders of silver, basically it will mean that the, the, the COMEX will go bust and go bankrupt. So that's the whole thing. Uh, if we're having a look here at this chart, I'll post this in the Birch feed later. Uh, we can see that 
um, quite considerably it fell off. Now, if we have a look here in the month of uh, January, it peaked, and now the delivery month being March has depleted a lot. Um, here we are in uh, April, and we are seeing um, that um, we're seeing that things are getting. I just saw a comment here, which is really fun. Um, there could be some sparks happen in the course of the next few days. And I find it interesting that when, you know, there's talks out there that the Perth Mint may not have any silver. Uh, it's basically a bank run happening out there in the precious metals market, which if you remember, we pull out some coins from our pocket, we will see some gold coins, some silver coins, but none of them will contain either gold or silver. Um, you know, gold and silver were considered as money beforehand when we had a sound economy and they've been debased from that. So this is a lot of market rigging and there's a lot of people out there that are trying to smash this market apart. Um, there is rumours that there is no silver at the mint um, and I know for sure, uh, firsthand, that I got uh, some silver bars the other day delivered uh, to me. And uh, when I took physical delivery of them, uh, I took them to the vault and I knew something wasn't wrong if, if it wasn't right. And if I hadn't have, um, you know, purchased it pretty much directly from the mint, um, then I would have thought these things were fake and uh, were like some scammy thing off eBay. But anyway, I took them to the vault, had a look and pulled out one from like a couple of months beforehand and put them side by side. I made a video on this the other day, which I will share with you guys shortly. Um, these bars look like cheap China knockoffs and there is talks that China is now supplying the, um, the silver uh, for the Perth Mint. So um, I cannot, you know, confirm or deny that. But what I do have, uh, and I've made a video on this, which will come out shortly, my team will post it up in the course of the next few days or whatever, um, that I do have bars and I have taken possession personally of bars that do look like a cheap China knockoff. If I had a, a, a t-shirt or an item or an iPhone and you felt that you know this thing doesn't look 100% right or correct and it looks like a cheap you know ripoff of it then that is what this silver bar looked like. So it's very interesting uh, time out there. I do note also, um, that if we look at the Bitcoin price, everyone's going on about Bitcoin at the moment. People saying, Birch, you should I buy some Bitcoin? Um, it's gone nuts. Should I get involved? Um, you know, do what you please, do what you wish. Uh, Bitcoin was $3,000, $4,000 a year ago. Uh, Bitcoin is now, I don't know, I think it's like 70 grand at the moment. It was about 82 grand about two weeks ago. A week and a half ago, it was about 82 grand. Uh, it did fall down to about 65 grand Aussie just the other day. And um, everybody thinks it's the greatest thing to get involved, right? Let's go buy some Bitcoin. Let's go buy some shitcoin, whatever it is, right? I'm not buying Bitcoin, right? It's been pumped up so high, right? At $3,000, at $5,000, it was good buying. It was fair buying. It was much better buying when it was 500 bucks or, or whatever. But... At $80,000 of Bitcoin, the downside risk is so far greater and the upside potential has been minimized. So a lot of people have made a lot of profit out of that um, at 80 grand. And, um, you know, if you could have bought it for five grand going back a year ago, uh, it has gone up 16 times, which is which is great, right? If you're holding Bitcoin, you know, it's uh, it's good. But, um, you know, it's at, at, at 80 grand, I see the risk that's being too high. So when I look at the markets. I haven't actually got a chart for this. You guys can go and have a look at maybe a silver price chart uh, or a Bitcoin price chart. And people say, oh, Bitcoin keeps rising and all that sort of stuff. That's cool. How come it's very cyclical, right? And all the Bitcoin, all the people from the Bitcoin community are saying that Bitcoin price is um, is, 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 is rising. It's finding price, price discovery, which is basically finding a new high and it's called price discovery. If that is the case, how come when we look at silver, it gets smashed down at the end of each month and then takes back off? So if you go and look at the silver price chart, every month it goes up and then it gets pushed all the way back down to the end of the month. And then when the end of the month is over, it gets pushed back up again and then it gets pushed back down again. And each month it's starting to look like Bart Simpson's haircut or Lisa Simpson's haircut, Bart Simpson more so because he's got like a square 
blockhead, a bit like mine, um, but you know, it was like um, that is what the silver price looks like. How come the same sort of trends are showing on Bitcoin? Right? Um, I love Bitcoin. I love cryptocurrencies. I think there's a lot of potential. Could Bitcoin go to a million bucks? I believe so. I hope so. I'm, I'm very heavily invested into it. But would I be going out there running out and buying Bitcoin when it's nearly $100,000? Um, probably not necessarily. So looking at the manipulation, uh, it's evident that Bitcoin uh, is being manipulated uh, for bad purposes. I don't think it's being pushed up. I think it's suppressed. I think Bitcoin could and, and should be a lot higher. Uh, I think that we're seeing you know, the price of silver being pushed down and, and suppressed. Um, I find it interesting as well that in Perth at the end of the month, uh, being right now, they've got a, a lockdown. Uh, no one's really out and about around the mint, um, nor were they out uh, at the end of January. If we look at when the last lockdown occurred and look at when the last delivery date came from the COMEX and look at the last, I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist here at all, I'm just questioning it's, it's, it's very sus. So do I think that they're you know, connected or anything like that? I just find it humorous that that is the case. So before I get on some other topics here, um, I've got some news articles that are paper format. So the first one, first one here um, is, uh, let's go through the national security boss warns drums of war are beating. So this is from uh, news.com. Um, powerful national security bosses warn the drums of war are beating in a thinly veiled reference to China. In a stark Anzac Day message to all staff, Home Affairs, uh, Chief Mike Pizzullo said, Australia should be prepared to send off yet again our warriors to fight. Uh, stressed Australia must seek peace via diplomacy, um, uh, but said that it could be not come at the cost of the precious liberty. So there's a lot of pressure here for a war with China. Uh, I find it interesting um, and I encourage people, like, remember this word called Pine Gap, right? There's a place called Pine Gap um, in Australia. Uh, Pine Gap is located in the Northern Territory. Uh, it is a U.S. military base. Um, and basically, all countries that the U.S. has um, sort of a, a strong military alliance with, they have one of these bases uh, like Pine Gap in it. So there's so many uh, countries which have... US military bases. Australia has Pine Gap, but there's many sister sort of channels to that. Um, that's in uh, Northern Territory. And notice when, you know, uh, whenever the war was and Japan or whatever it was bombed Australia, it went to um, Northern Territory. Um, you know, is it coming to Australia or is it going to our military base? And the question I ask is why do we have a lot more troops that are being deployed to Australia for a potential war? So, um, is there something uh, looming there? Do I think we're going to get a takeover? I think, you know, the strings that are being pulled anyway, you know, there's takeovers all the time. It's like, who's the new puppet master that's going to, you know, be controlling us? Um, yeah, I don't think that we're going to see ships come in and, and, and take us over. Uh, it could, but I, I just don't see it because I think that we're far more greater of an asset to be left in one piece. Um, and just slowly, slowly, um, you know, uh, make some changes here. Um, where I do find it interesting is, you know, if we do overlay the fact that if Perth Mint, for example, had to borrow their silver or purchase their silver from China, right? Why does China own the metal and Australia doesn't have its own resources? Why is China sending off uh, refined bars back to Australia and selling to its people? Is that because we're already bankrupt? Is that because there was a bit of a heist in the back end. Is that because, you know, things have been manipulated too far? Just interesting. Um, I note, um, I'm going to be very, I'm going to be really just sensitive on this one today. Um, I note that there has been an outbreak of, how do you call it, um, you know, virus, said 19. Um and, you know, if we look at where these outbreaks are occurring, are they occurring where people have recently had said jab of said, you know, chemical? Um, you know, 
pretty bad out there, things that are going on. I'm going to leave that one to the side just specifically for today. Um, when we look at the word <laughs> on top of this, I can't say it on here because we'll be censored. Um, it's just really uh, interesting how that has all been handled. Um, don't have any more charts there for today. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go to some of your questions for the moment. And uh, then I'm going to go back to some of my notes of what I was going to talk about. So um, inflation example, uh, Danielle, um, inflation example, got a new fridge in 2019 that died a couple of weeks ago. Cost was $1,345 back then. And then the same fridge is $1,800 uh, now. That's what I'm seeing out there everywhere, right? It doesn't matter if it's a white good. doesn't matter if it's a new kitchen. Um, recently with uh, all the motels um, I've had to look at you know supply chains and where things come from and, and bedding and uh, and all that sort of stuff so I've got to basically buy this year maybe about 15 ride on lawnmowers <laughs> who would have thought go out and buy 15 ride on lawnmowers should be right uh, I'm going to go buy 15 sets of bed sheet for 30 rooms times three changeovers right so let's do the numbers on that right so three sets of changeover per bed room um so that's three times by 30 that's 90 times it by like 15 i want to get to 20 but i know i've got you know a good 15 locked in that will end up being thousands of bed set sheets um that will mean that i need to go and purchase fridges and freezers and all that sort of stuff um that will be needed and the cost of all these things i'm like you're fucking kidding me right you're kidding me the cost of these things and the prices of where they're rising up to i've just got here a message here from sam my dodo plan went up five dollars this month due to the increased nbn cost does it really cost you anything for the nbn Not really does it um i thought the government was doing that it's interesting um pat hey pat pat's awesome uh for those of you that are um that are a part of the business and i know pat pat's one of my investor relation managers and Gemma's here as well uh, so pat and Gemma are online uh Gemma and pat do awesome stuff and, and help with the community by managing their portfolios of uh of purchasing um what have we got here? Uh, don't hate the player, hate the game. Exactly. The game is out there. Understand how the game has worked uh, and try and find the opportunities to take advantage. So uh, for me, as I've been banging on for the last two years, own assets. Debt's not the worst thing. Make sure your cash flow is in order. Uh, don't get caught up in hype. Uh, things can be hyped up a hell of a lot higher. Um, you know, will we see, you know, an actual crash i believe we might see a little mini crash uh, we started to see a crash um, in 2019 the 10th of october uh, 2019 the market or 2018 sorry the years are flying by uh, 2018 we started to see the crash on the 10th of october um, it got papered over towards the end of 2018 um, in 2019 in september uh, we saw the market really fall off a, a, a cliff and we saw a lot of stimulus being pushed in the back end. Um, but now the level of manipulation and fraud, they're removing any transparency with um, you know the amount of control and, and, and fraud in the, the financial markets and, and, and increasing of liquidity. So um, I just saw a message here. How good is it at the moment? It's amazing. The amount of um, you know scam going on with uh, the financial market so there could be little glitches and i think we may be due for a little glitch maybe in 12 months or so um, just as they start rolling back some of these stimulus measures but don't be fooled they've thrown everything out there to protect us and to look after us and to keep the system afloat um, that will all be back plus some more when that occurs so it's going to be um, you know exciting holy moly that's a huge fall i'm assuming you're talking about the comex and the amount of stock and inventory um, there is less and less silver in supply and i'm just talking about silver today i will make a bit of reference to it i do from time to time make reference about silver 
just because I think that something is exciting happening out there. Uh, Matt asked, what about crypto in general? Um, I love crypto. I'm very invested in the crypto. Uh, I've been a big proponent of crypto. Um, I'm just not caught up into all the shit coins and I don't care about XRP. I'm not a fan of XRP. I'm very invested in the crypto. Uh, if you're aware and you've been following me for some time now, uh, you'll remember that I got into Bitcoin when it was $500 a, uh, a coin. Uh, I was having a chat um, with, um, yeah, I was having a chat with one of my mates telling him this thing sounded like a scam when I first heard about Bitcoin. And, um, and then I ended up buying it and uh, my mate was right. So um, do you see Craig Wright taking crypto exchanges to court? Uh, for using the Bitcoin name? Uh, interesting, interesting question. Um, well, I actually have had a good chat uh, with Craig Wright previously. I filmed it and put it on one of my other YouTube channels beforehand. It's about four or five years ago. Um, for those of you that aren't aware of who Craig Wright is, a lot of people say he's not real, the, not the Bitcoin founder. Um, I have spoken to him. I've got reason to believe that he had a big role in playing in the foundation of uh, Bitcoin. Um, and it's very interesting, his work. Um, he writes a lot of stuff that sounds like Q out there. You know, those people that are um, following the, 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 the Q, which uh, is not something that I ever got into and I don't believe it and I don't follow that. Um, I, whilst I do like Craig Wright fundamentally, and I think that he had a real big role to play in the formation of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space, um, I find a lot of his stuff not to, um, you know, to be pumped up. Um, so is he trying to take people to court? Is he trying to? There has been a talk, a lot of talk of him, and there's been power of show, seeing him try and push power for him to um lock up exchanges and um press for charges against people and to sue people uh, for using the name of bitcoin because he was the founder of it he believes um will we see something come from that i don't know it's a fun thing about this market being crypto so it's uh it's cool i've got my it must be color shirt so it sort of looks like a bit of the the bitcoin color it's no bitcoin shirt it's just a, a plain yellow one um uh, Stephen, um, I'm really surprised China sold silver to Australia. So uh, there has been reports of people demanding physical silver um, and there has been cheap Chinese bars delivered to them, which is fact. Uh, for those of you that are just tuning in now, uh, I don't have the bars here, they're in a vault. Um, however, I did make a video of it the other day and uh, it will be coming out shortly where I put like about five or six different bars from over the years different types of bars out and I show you a bar that I delivered that I got delivered and it is not it looks like a cheap fake knockoff um, silver bar so uh, if those rumors are true then I could possibly be holding a handful of those bars so the same question here from Rory uh, do you still own properties in Mori, Tari and Tamworth uh, I still do own some of those properties uh, I had a lot of them burned down over the years um, which uh, I just ended up selling those properties. I got good, um, you know, sales for them and all that sort of stuff. Um, I still own a couple. I'm not a big fan of those specific areas, um, but I still own a lot of stuff in regional properties. I've always been very uh, much more uh, committed to inner city and not inner city, but like you know, city based. So Brisbane and Sydney and Perth and and Gold Coast and those sort of markets. Perth has been more probably the last two years. Um, I started buying in Perth when the market hit a bottom. The market is very hot over in Perth at the moment. Uh, rentals are very tight, um, as well as sales prices are, are on the move. So um, I go into markets when they're really depressed. Uh, areas like Moree and Taree and Tamworth, um, you know, they're, they're not my game today. So. Um, got here a couple other notes I was going to talk about, which takes me to um, uh, the property market as to what am I seeing uh, generally out there speaking. Um, I have always got about sort of three, four hundred offers out at any point 
in the market um, and that changes daily i've got specific systems and, and processes of how i deal with those agents um, and the market is very hot you need to move very quickly on properties nowadays uh, remove you know the, the amount of red tape that you put in making the deal happen a lot of people finding it difficult um, i've never been uh, busier in business um, i've never had more people requesting my help to obtain you know properties for them and to locate and negotiate the deals which is what um, i specialize in all my investors i work closely with to build their portfolios um, i have never been busier from uh, writing loans we've had some of our biggest months ever in business from the people uh, wanting to um, uh, obtain finance and, and whatnot um, i see here a little note here saying rentals have gone ballistic in darwin i'm not exposed in the darwin market but in my personal markets which is basically everywhere apart from darwin and uh, tasmania um, i actually bought an office in in melbourne last week and um, it, it, it's gone through um, and i paid like 50 rand for it so it's just a little cheapy office so i do have something in melbourne but i'm not the biggest fan of melbourne uh, personally but um, looking at every single market out there uh, everyone's saying rents are going ballistic everyone's saying that prices are going ballistic everyone's saying that um you know it doesn't matter what area um, um yeah it doesn't it's, it's reading notes as they come through um markets are going up everywhere there's very few even in those little tiny country towns the mining towns um a lot of you, you guys and girls that are watching uh, that have you know help buy properties for over the last few years we got in those areas before they were even talked about and now they're sort of loud out there so yeah um, looking at the market uh, do i see it slowing down anytime soon um, yeah um, do you still own your blacktown land i saw on youtube i think there was a block of land i bought for 11 grand it was out in riverston so uh yeah if you're talking about that block of land uh, no, I bought a block of land for eleven thousand dollars in Western Sydney, uh, maybe about twelve or thirteen years ago. I bought it for eleven thousand. The day I settled it, I sold it for thirty-five thousand. I made sort of twenty grand just like that, and um, I was happy with that. It's probably worth. I think it sold about two years ago for about two hundred and twenty or two hundred forty thousand. Um, yeah, that's the one we're talking about. Um, yeah, I sold that property. I'm fine with it. I was cool with what I did with it on the day. I made some profit. Um, the thing is, is that people ask me quite often, Nathan, should I sell property? Um, should I, you know, buy a property? Someone asked me today, it was actually Pat had a question. It was one of, someone came through our office and said, I don't want to buy properties going to give me, you know, cash flow. I want to buy properties for capital growth. I don't buy properties for cash flow. I want to own assets and see those assets rise in value. The difference is, is if you have good, strong cash flow coming through, the bank will allow you to buy more. So the question I always ask people is, do you want to have one property for say 700 or 500,000 doubled to a mil or 1.4? Or do you want to have four or five properties or 10 properties go from two or three mil to five or eight mil or, or whatever the larger the asset base you have the um, the more growth you're going to see so looking at you know selling off assets i have sold properties uh previously um i try not to sell properties uh most times when i've bought the properties i've bought them with the purpose of on selling them very quickly uh, but it's very rare that i see people say i'm so glad i sold a property 10 years ago or 20 years ago most people sit there and say, I wish I had bought more. I wish I hadn't sold it or whatever the case may be. Um, we are building and have property management and rentals are being leased without it showing. Exactly. The market's very, very, very hot out there. Um, if we look at specifically uh, my Gold Coast office and the market there in the southeast Queensland, um, our properties are being leased before they come up for rent. Um, I actually had one of mine the other day, had a 60 or $80 per week rental increase on it. Um, and they paid six months worth of rent in advance. So that was great. Um, there's a lot of cool things happening out in the market there. 
Some markets, such as um, specific areas in Sydney, have still been hit. They're still a little bit lower than where they were um, a couple of years ago. Um, that's a great buying opportunity at the moment. Uh, rental figures uh, are still lower in Sydney at the moment, which is great because there's great opportunity within that. Um, so yeah, looking out there in the market, um, I wouldn't say one city or you know place is a standout. Um, and this is a funny thing, right? It's not Australia that we're seeing. Like people go, oh, is Sydney going to go up more than Melbourne, and Melbourne is going to go up more than Queensland, and whatever the case may be. If we look at every nation around the world, right, whether it be Sydney or Australia or uh, US or New Zealand or Canada uh, or the US or England, like in the UK, they've been locked down, right? They've been literally locked in their houses, house arrest, and everybody uh, has not been out of their house for months, like not even for a year. So people haven't been out of the house in the UK for a year. They haven't had a job. Um, there's massive unemployment and everything's just decimated, right? But for some reason uh, in the UK, right, London house prices are unaffordable, right? We've got a big boom happening in the UK. Why is there a boom happening in all of these fucking nations? Why? Because it's manipulation of the currency until they start rewinding that clock, which they may try to do. They're trying to do it right now. They can't, right? This Ponzi scheme has to keep going. So those of you with the assets are gonna have more. Those of you that have cash are gonna have less. So if you have cash, you're gonna be buying less for it. So that's my view on it. Um, that's my view and feedback for the property market update. Um, one thing that I wanna talk about a lot of people um, commented the other day and I want to say thanks for all the, the love that was out there um, I did settle Friday was like a very uh, you know heartfelt day um, I did something really cool on Friday um, and when I say I I'm talking on behalf of my team because you're only as good as the people that you've got around you um, from a business perspective I'm only as great as the people in the team uh, from a community perspective, only as great as all of you that watch and are a part of what we do. Um, and as for my own success, personally, I'm only successful as everyone that I've got around me. But um, on Friday, I settled a property. It was the Birch Hotel Group number one, Cooktown Motel. Um, I've got a goal of getting 20 motels a year for the next five years. That's 100 motels. After that, I think I'm going to uh, go and play around with some other things as well as buying more motels. So with that, um, I was just thinking about when it happened. I reflected on, you know, the um, you know the journey that's taken me from where I've been to to where I am today. And um, if we look at you know the times, I've had really great times in business, really great times in life, really shit times in business, really shit times in life, uh, times where I've had, you know, not even a hundred bucks to buy paint to put on the wall, uh, days and weeks where I had to, you know, sleep on an office floor, literally, um, you know, the shit that I never put onto, um, onto Facebook or on, 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 on Instagram or on, you know, social media or that has been my very big days out there, which, um, which have been very painful in life. Like it's not always been. Uh, smooth sailing and a lot of people that are close to me saw me go through some hell going back a few years ago and um, to be able to turn things around and be able to push to a point where we're in a depression right we're in a depression going in there with a strategy new business strategy to accumulate a whole industry that I haven't even been in beforehand and uh, be able to build an industry inside of that that's really cool so it was it was really monumental on that day I wouldn't have been able to do it without having great people around, whether it be the people on my team inside the Be Invested group of companies, whether it be, you know, Rid One from One Path, whether it be, you know, my support staff, my transition team, uh, my general manager, Linda, whether it be Kieran, whether it be Shaley, um, whether it be Stephen Sudorowski from Zenith Legal, a big shout out to Steve, thanks for all uh, your help and support over the years, wouldn't have been able to pull this shit off. And, um, you know, it was a big day on, uh, on, on, on Friday. Um, this week alone, so what are we up to? Tuesday, uh, since last Friday, bought three more motels. Three more motels. Um, there's a really interesting business strategy behind that. 
Uh, I'm not sharing any numbers on these motels. I'm not sharing any uh, intimate details on them because uh, it's a really cool strategy that I've created. Uh, people can't really do it unless someone's got like massive, massive, massive capital and, and backing and, and cash flows. So, but basically, they're all self-funding each other. Um, and you know, we're living in a world where people can't travel overseas. Um, we're living in a world where there's a lot of uh, uncertainty and, and fear, especially in the hospitality and tourism industry. And uh, I saw it as a great opportunity to go pick up a lot of infrastructure at a cheap price. And, um, you know, kind of like a real world version of Monopoly, but Monopoly misses out because uh, it, it tries to get people trapped into being a good person, not going to jail, pay all your taxes, accept and use paper money and, uh, you know, property and, and stuff will make you rich. In principle, Monopoly sounds like a great game. However, inside of Monopoly, it doesn't take it in consideration um, inflation. It doesn't talk about real money. Off game of that. Um, as for the opportunity, um, I think we may see some support to that industry, which I'm supporting by picking up as many assets as I can at the moment, which is great. But there'll be a lot of people and there'll be a lot of advertising and propaganda to a lot of these destinations in, in time to be um, and a lot of people, you know, traveling within Australia. Um, I had one of my guys, John, uh, he's helping on the project with the solar project. He's the brains with the electrical stuff. Um, so he was out at the solar farm the other day. Um, we haven't got a dwelling at the farm, so we've only got infrastructure for you know the solar and uh, he had to stay in a local town and the local town there's no local towns all the accommodation is gone and this is in like really regional and rural Australia so uh, there's a lot of people out there a lot of uh, stimulus packages on regional uh, infrastructure such as train lines and uh, roads and uh, upgrades of infrastructure out there uh, there's a lot of people going to these places a lot of people going to um, you know, see, you know, place in Australia that they never thought they're like, I can't travel overseas, they're going to stay local because they have to. And, uh, you know, big upside for that. So I'm really excited to see uh, where that goes. Um, what else is there? How to get ahead in the current market was one of the things that I want to talk about. Um, you know, a lot of people saying, I can't buy a property, I can't buy a house, I can't, you know, get cheap property. How does it work? Uh, firstly, have a plan, have a strategy. Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't get caught up in the fact that, oh, I'm never going to you know, be able to buy a house now. Don't get caught up in the FOMO. Um, you know, I'm seeing people out there doing really stupid stuff in... Um, <laughs> um, uh, what's that? Bing back. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, a lot of people um, sort of doing silly things and making silly moves and cutting corners in this sort of market. So don't be bullied, don't be pressured, don't feel like you're never going to be able to buy a property. Just because house prices have hit an all-time high, they've gone up double, doesn't mean that you know it's the time to go in and buy those sort of things. Be strategic about it, uh, be very you know strategic with your moves um, and, and when you are ready, take the right moves. That's why planning and strategy is very important. Uh, emotion gets you killed. Um, so make sure you've got everything. Make sure you've got your ducks lined up, basically. So uh, make sure you've got finance. Make sure you've got a good team. Make sure that you've got a good lawyer that's going to help you execute and, and be able to you know, move quickly. But don't cut the corners and, and not have uh, yourself protected. So um, will there be an opportunity? Um, next two weeks, I think. It's my birthday coming up, I've been told. <laughs> So birthday in three weeks, I think. And um, I realized that it's been half my life I've been investing in a property. It's been 18 years uh, this year uh, that I've been investing in the property. I bought my property just after I turned 18 and I'm 36 in a couple of weeks. And um, with the markets that I've seen over that period of time, I've seen the scamdemic, I've seen the GFC, we've seen the GFD, which led in the scamdemic. Uh, we've seen lots of growth. Um, we've seen lots of falls. Uh, when I first started buying properties back in 2003, um, 
you know, a lot of people don't realize that the market in Sydney cr crashed between 2003 and 2008. So technically I've seen the first market was in was a down cycle. Then when the GFC came, people got shaky, but the market took off. Um, then I saw the market go down. So two to three market cycles that have been exposed to. I've seen, um, you know, great opportunity every single year. The year that I was able to sign a contract half my life ago when I was 18, um, you know, I've been able to purchase great assets uh, in every single market um, every year since that. So did I go out firstly and buy my dream home? No, uh, I bought a shit box uh, property in Western Sydney in a Hauso area. Um, a lot of people mistake the fact that they think I grew up there. I didn't, I bought my first property there. And I made my first million bucks for buying a lot of these cheap, kicked in, fire damaged, burnt out, damaged properties back in the day. And doing the hustle, doing the renos, renting them out, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it wasn't until time went on that I was able to move into different assets. So, you know, a lot of people are fearing, I can't buy my house, I don't want to live in, I'm going to be screwed, etc. Just take action, be in the market. If you are trying to buy a million dollar house today, which is just a pretty basic a commodity really if you can't afford to buy the million dollar property people are trying their hardest they save up 20 grand the house price moves by 50 or 80 grand don't try and chase the market you could either get in and buy a property for a million bucks but then if you buy that property you're buying it at a pumped up price and you are on the hook for having to pay and service for that debt so you have to go out to work every day get your job get the income pay that mortgage um, you know, still in 2021, uh, you can buy properties in capital cities for less than $200,000. So instead of buying one property for a million dollars, you can buy five properties for a million dollars and have five tenants in those properties that are going to work every day to pay that mortgage. And if you are lucky to buy properties that are very well placed with good growth, good equity and good cash flow, you'll have a little bit of money left over from those properties and then use that income to buy yourself a property. So it's just being strategic uh, on that front. So don't get caught up in the market. A lot of people will be um, sort of, you know, not understanding what's happening out there in the market today. So I just had a few little notes here of things I was going to talk about. But um, a lot of people will feel lonely, will feel, you know, that they can't take advantage that they can't make action happen, that they're stuck and that they can't, you know, do anything in, in the current market. Um, but, you know, there is a lot of knowledge out there. There is a lot of opportunity still. Um, don't fear that, you know, it's all over and I'm never going to get involved. So I'd rather take one step towards getting to that dream place than, you know, trying to overstretch myself and, and screw myself up. So be very strategic with it from that front. Got emails flying in, things going everywhere here. Um, questions, if you guys have questions, uh, flick those questions over. Um, what do you reckon? Sell property at hyperinflation stage, then retain currency for property opportunities post hyperinflation? No, at the end of the hyperinflation, I will sell off something. I'll do something to pay down my debt, um, but I don't want to be carrying through the debt into the new currency system. So as we're seeing it at the moment, we're still at the very, very early stages of um, uh, good questions. I'll keep, keep the questions coming through. I think we're still at the very early stage. We haven't seen hyperinflation yet. By the time this decade is out, I'd hope to have no debt personally, but I will constantly review and assess. Uh, when I first started getting the cryptocurrency, I was like, I'm going to use this crypto to go up and then pay out my debt when it hits a certain figure. But now I often think about it, I'm like, would I rather go and pay out my debt or would I keep that profit and then go and purchase more assets that are going to produce more income? So basically, if you had a million dollars worth of debt today and a million dollars worth of asset, let's assume that you've got a million dollars worth of asset, sorry, with debt attached to it, you've got a million dollars cash. Most people would go and pay out their debt and keep their million dollar property owned outright because they might save themselves 3%. In my view, and this is non-financial advice, I'm just talking generically here, um, you guys um, uh, keep the questions coming, guys. I'll answer the questions. Um, 
would I pay out that million dollar debt? For me personally, um, I'm not a fan of paying out the debt. You could take the million bucks, pay out the million dollar loan, you're stuck with one million dollar worth of asset, you'll save 3% interest. However, for me, I'd rather keep the million dollar worth of debt and the million dollars worth of asset. I'd rather spend the million dollars, go and purchase a new asset, let's call it a property or a group of properties, which are a million bucks that return 7% interest, uh, 7% return on them. That means I'd be getting 70 grand a year, take 30 grand of that profit, pay out the interest on this one over here, and then keep 40 grand from my pocket. So my net position is that I've got $2 million worth of asset, I've got $1 million worth of net worth still, and then I've got 40 grand a year passive income after servicing that debt. Because if the market was to double, I'd have $2 million that would double to 4 million, rather than 1 million that would double to two, and I'd have no leverage, no cash flow, no nothing. So that would be my strat. that is my strategy. But as for after hyperinflation, I've never been through one, so I don't have the exact answer. Um, Gordy, Jordy, Jordy, um, or Gordy, Gordy, Jordy, sorry. Um, would you go straight to the bank or would you go through brokers? Uh, not one bank will get you to your goal. Gone are the days where you have a good relationship with your bank and they'll look after you till you retire. Um, you're just a number in their system. They really got no idea who you are. Um, they have no care or anything like that. So no point trying to build a relationship on that front. You want to be able to get someone that's going to support you um, to get uh, all of the debt that you want. So each bank might lend you 500 grand or a million bucks, or even if you're lucky, like $2 million, but then you're going to reach a point where you're capped out at the bank. Not one bank will take you to the whole um, the whole distance with building at that portfolios. So um, yeah, with it on that front, um, that is why I'd go to a broker. Uh, Jess, hey Birchie, do you have a buyer's agency for your customers? Um, yes, I am the buyer's agent for my investors. If you would like some help, um, flick us an email at admin at beinvested.com.au or call my office on 1300 367 925 uh, or flick, flick a message into the comment description below. Uh, Aaron, how you going, mate? Hopefully all is well uh, from Walter's Property Group. Hit him up, send him a message if you if you are looking to sell. <laughs> Have a chat with Aaron. Um, so we've got some more questions over here. Um, hey, Gemma, uh, I'll send you an email for a good supplier of linen for your motels. Josh, please do. Uh, if anyone does sell supplies for motels and bedding and linen and all that sort of stuff, Flick us a message uh, if you can help us out. That would be great, uh, whether it be you know, anything that could be needed for a motel. Uh, Brad, hey Nathan, what are your thoughts uh, on the bright line rule capital gains tax here in New Zealand and the government trying to stop investors buying higher LVRs and interest deductions? They are trying to control the market just as APRA um, did back in 2016. So back in 2016, APRA um, came out in Australia and basically made it hard for investors to get loans and that crippled the market. They had to try and unwind that and do more stimulus packages to try and push that back up. So at the moment, you might feel a little bit tight in that market. Keep hustling, persevere, find opportunities, find ways to uh, continue to expand. Um, one thing that I do know is that a lot of New Zealanders are now coming to Australia in order to purchase properties that are below uh, you know, sort of market value and, and whatnot. Uh, in New Zealand, I understand that you can't go buy properties for like 200 grand and 150 or 100 grand. They're all sort of half a million dollar mark. Um, I remember going back like 15, 20 years ago, everyone was like, oh, New Zealand's got the cheapest properties. Let's go there for 10, 20, 30,000 dollar properties. So it's quite uh, ironic that the prices have gone up so high. But, um, you know, a lot of people are coming to Australia uh, because they do have the ability to buy in Australia from uh, New Zealand, so, sort of from an expat sort of uh, view, but they're not expats, so yeah. Um, Kane, can you explain your definition of a good uh, foundation property portfolio? I could go on all day about this one, uh, but there's lots of videos that I put out on, on YouTube and, uh, and Instagram and, and, and you know podcasts that I put out there about how to build a good solid foundation property portfolio, but ultimately, you want to be getting properties that are going to put you close to your goal. So if you need more cash flow to get the banks to lend you more money, go for cash flow property. If you need more equity, go for equity rich. Most investors need a good balance of properties within capital cities with good growth prospects, 
good equity and good cash flow. So it's important to have the right balance. Uh, understand how the finance works for the banks that you're using and then you know purchase the properties in line with that. Um, say hello to the beautiful Gemma. Gemma is here. You can say hi to Gemma and to Pat as well. So yeah. Um, uh, what do we got here? Uh, Johan, um, your motels could end up uh, permanent rentals for all the people getting pushed out of their rentals owner occupiers. Not sure if this is happening in other parts of the country. It would be um, interesting to see what would happen on that front, but it's uh, but it's cool. Um, Reese, um, I've been looking into Venezuela hyperinflation and the effect on investors, which has been just as bad for them as the public. How do we protect ourselves as investors from such an event affecting us uh, in the future? I would like to know your opinion. Um, that's a good question. So I have never lived through a hyperinflation beforehand. However, if we look back in the uh, Reimer uh, administration back in the Germany in the 1920s and 1930s, uh, the wealthy people, the wealthiest people that came out of the hyperinflation um, actually had debt and attached it to properties and other assets. Um, and they paid off the debt with the hyperinflated value of the asset. So um, I think that, and I've said it from day one, that the hyperinflation in Venezuela and, and other sort of nations around the world uh, weren't handled too correctly. And I don't see that would have that extent of a hyperinflation. I just think that we'll see 50 years worth of inflation in a period of a couple of years, which, um, yeah, with it um, looking at, you know, where we're at, I'd like to see that debt gets paid out and raised just before the peak of the hyperinflation, because there will be a point where people cannot afford to live. They can't afford to pay their rent. They can't afford to pay their bills. They can't afford to pay for food. Um, there'll be the difference between, do we put electricity on or do we pay for food to feed the baby? You know, people will be, um, you know, pushed to that extent. Um, and at that point, you want to make sure the assets are paid off for. So that's what I'm looking out for. Um, Gemma, there's lots of uh, love going on there. Michelle's here from, uh, from Queensland. If you need um seeing messages come through as well on text message to me lots of things going on my screen if you do own an investment property and you feel like you need a pay rise send an email out to blink michelle and her team uh you know at blink are amazing right they've been getting you know almost zero percent vacancies for their investors recently um, they've been getting the highest rents around, as I say, on average, sort of 50 to 80 bucks a week rent uh, increases. So if you need help, um, reach out to Michelle. She's here. She's on the, the Facebook uh, commenting as well. Uh, if you want to reach out and see if your property is getting the highest rent, send an email out to the team at payrise, P-A-Y-R-I-S-E at blinkproperty.com.au. So payrise at blinkproperty.com.au um, and see if Michelle can help you get a pay rise. If you want to, if any of you are watching and you have a property and I don't manage it, um, you know, you probably get some real estate agent doing their thing, trying to force you to sell it. Uh, watch out for the agents out there actually at the moment because there's so many people throwing out, you know, sell your property, sell your property. And people are like, oh yeah, it sounds great. Like on the day, let's, you know, sell a property. But then six months later, they're like, fuck, I wish I didn't sell that property. So Make sure if you are selling the property, sell it for a reason. Sell it because you're trying to achieve an outcome. Uh, but there's lots of agents that aren't looking after owners at the moment and the rents are not high enough. So uh, if you need help increasing your cash flow, um, you know you might have one or two properties. You might have 10 properties. If you've got, let's call it five, and you boost the rents up by 50 bucks a week, there's an extra 250 bucks a week or 13 grand a year. Um, if you've got 10 properties, there's an extra 500 bucks a week or 26 grand a year. Flick us an email, payrise at blinkproperty.com.au. There's my little ad for the day. Um, New Zealand government are trying to kill off mum and dad investors. They're just trying to control a hyperinflation to their property market, right? And the same thing will happen in Australia. It started to happen back in 2016. They've taken their, their, their handbrake off recently. Um, and it's a bit hard to control here in Australia because you've got capital city properties going up, you've got coastal properties now going up, you've got things going off everywhere, but some markets are still in a bit of a lull. So, yeah. Uh, Manon, I hope you're well, mate. 
and uh, having a great week. We'll, we'll catch up soon, mate. Uh, banks have been pumping fixed rates. At what stage would you fix your loans? Uh, for me personally, uh, I'm not fixing my loans until I get uh, an interest rate with a one in front of it myself or even less than that. But um, you know, when you're taking out a fixed interest rate, you're taking up a bet against a bank. The banks are controlling us, they're ruling us. Um, and really, you've got to question yourself um, whether you know, you're going to get the best outcome if you're taking that bet against the bank. Um, if it's for a short period of time, 12 months, two years, um, you, know, you can get some of those cheaper rates, but you know, will the rates be even lower at that period of time? Um, there's lots of variables there. So just make sure if you are fixing them, most importantly, I see people fixing their rates and then they're wanting to refinance, they're wanting to pull out equity. If you fix your interest rates, it's very difficult for you to pull out your equity. If you fix the interest rates, it's very hard for you to you know, sell the property because you might have to pay a very large and hefty uh, break fee. Um, uh, Danielle, I hope you're doing well and awesome. Um, Tracy, you cannot claim uh, interest costs against your personal income, costing all new investors at least $5,000 per annum extra costs. It is crazy. I have heard it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if they've grandfathered that normally when the government come in and change some sort of lending, uh, some tax laws, or whatever. Generally, it's grandfathered. So, um, yeah, it's really shit. And I find it interesting. Like, they've printed off all of this money and now they're trying to, you know, squeeze it, squeeze every last cent out of people, which will cause a bigger issue. If there's less investors in the market, uh, it's great because we're going to see higher rents. We're going to see the rents go up. So, yeah, um, you, you'll pick up from one hand. But a lot of people will freak out, um, like especially last year. Like look at this time last year, people were like selling things or like jumping out the windows. They're like, oh, it's the end of the world. And it's like, no, just remain calm. I said at the time, you know, it's like if there's a fire, some people are going to run for the door. They're going to get burnt. Some people are going to sit there. They're going to lose oxygen. Uh, smart places to take all of the stuff off the floor, take everybody's possessions, hide yourself away in the fire stairwell, wait until the fire brigades come, put out the fire, and then you will emerge with all the assets. And that's what I prepared for. I saw that happening prior, um, collected all the assets. Uh, I'm seeing it now, collecting even more assets. Uh, we're going to see very cool days. So looking at, um, you know, should you freak out? Because I know there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, friends across the border in uh, in New Zealand here that are watching. Um, yeah, don't freak out. Um, a lot of these things will only last for 12 months, 24 months, etc. And it could be um, lining, silver lining of the cloud. Um, Justin, awesome mate, put your balls on the line and have a good crack at it. Uh, I've been doing that for a long while. It's uh, it's uh, it's good. Um, it's a hustle, you know. Like a lot of people, a lot of people come in. They think the risk of life is oh, there's a risk of debt or risk of investing. What happens if a tenant trashes it or whatever the case might be? The um, the um, yeah, I was just reading some of the other things there. Uh, the biggest risk is working your life in a job that you hate or being stuck in a position that you don't want to be in. And I think having personal liberty and freedom, living life on your terms and doing what you want, how you want, when you want is is very important. Um, Andrea, well done to you and your team on number one. Uh, looking forward to watching the journey unfold. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. I hope you're doing well. Um, uh, get on the coin rate. I can't wait. Rocco, um, chat to Jeremy, Rocco. Uh, we've got that that property that we're talking about that you wanted. Uh, Renee, when do you predict hyperinflation to seize? Um, I think we're going to see the hyperinflation end when we lose our currency and we'll end up into some digital currency, um, which will be another illusion of wealth, just like our paper debt-based fiat currency system is that we currently work on. So, um, uh, Praveen, hey Nathan, any more investments um, uh, are available around the surface Gold Coast? The market is very, very hot in the surface and the Gold Coast market at the moment. Um, I've been very uh, confident on that market for a very long time. If you go back and check out some of my videos from about five, six years ago, um, I kept saying that we're going to go into recession. We're going to see devaluation of assets, which we saw since 2016. 
very, very bullish on the Gold Coast and Brisbane markets, um, which these markets uh, back then, um, no one wanted to see. And then, um, you know, here we are today and it's booming. It's a very, very hot market out there. Um, everything's selling as soon as it hits the market. Um, I am still buying in the Gold Coast market. I am still buying in the Brisbane markets, but I'm buying very cautiously uh, because I don't want to get buying into you know markets that are heated. I like going to markets that are depressed. Um, so I haven't been as aggressive as what I was previously, but there is still some good opportunities out there. I use the word some because you know, I was buying stuff for half the price a year ago or two years ago, then yeah, then, then, then we are now. Justin, I have a client who owns a home in Sydney who's wanting to sell. Uh, do you want to hook up and I can send them your way? Justin, I don't actually sell properties, uh, but I can help out by putting in contact with um, with agents that, that I do trust and do have confidence in, in order to get the maximum price. So. Um, please, yeah, if, if you do um, want to sell a property, if you've got a friend that wants to sell, um, feel free to introduce me and I'll put them in contact with someone uh, that I can trust and make sure they're looked after in, in the area to get them the highest price. So, um, and on that note, I know it's an hour and 20. Um, just want to say thanks a lot for everyone for tuning in. And um, yeah, I'll be back in a couple of weeks when I am. For those of you that have, uh, notice that I only do these, you know, sort of once a month at some point within the month. Um, I do have the podcast out there. It's available on Spotify, iTunes, um, Google Play. It's on the YouTube channel, so you can watch it wherever. If you watch it on YouTube, then you can fast forward it and make it go faster, so it's quicker if that's what you're inclined to do. Um, but on that note, guys and girls, thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks a lot for all your support, all your kind words. Thanks a lot for being an awesome community. Uh, if you need help with anything, reach out to myself, reach out to my team. Uh, yes, I do have a buyer's agency. Yes, I do uh, purchase properties for people. Yes, I do have finance. Yes, I do have legal and property management and anything you need to build a solid kick-ass property portfolio. So make sure you hit us up, admin at beinvestor.com.au um, or give us a call 1300 367 or just flick us a, a DM. We'll catch up soon. Have an awesome week. It's a good day to have a good day. Bye.